good to see everybody out tonight. Lord, I come to lift him up, Brother Ruby. Amen. If we lift him up, he honor everything we ever, every petition we ever brought before him. If we just lift him up and give him honor and praise instead of grumbling and griping and asking him for everything, we begin to lift up the name of Jesus, Brother David. All these things be added unto us. Amen. We try to go around things the hard way when it comes so simple. Jesus wants us to come just simply before him and lift him up in praise and give him honor and him be the king and lord in our life. If we let that little simple thing right there, all these other things be added into us. But we want to leave these things out by the Spirit and try to go after them the hard way when they don't come that way. Lord, I just want to lift him up and praise him. And I know God will honor everything I bring before him. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for the word tonight. For it being a light to my path. It is a light. It is a light. I'm thankful for it. Who's going to be first to sing a song or testify tonight? I got my scripture. All right, say your scripture. Before I say my scripture, I have something to read here. It kind of goes along with what I wanted to read. The little thing that somebody did, Gary, and I thought it was so true. And it's called Isn't It Funny? It says, Isn't it funny how a $20 bill looks so big when you take it to church? It's so small when you take it to the mall. I thought that one was so true. Isn't it funny how long it takes to how long it takes to serve God for one hour, and how quickly a team plays an hour of football? Isn't it funny how long a couple of hours at church is, but how short they are when you are watching a movie? Isn't it funny how we can think of how we can't think of anything to say when we pray, but we don't have difficulty thinking of things to say when we're on the phone. Isn't it funny how thrilled we get when a basketball game goes into overtime, but complain when a sermon is longer than the regular time? <laughs> Isn't it funny how hard it is to read a chapter of the Bible, but how easy it is to read 100 pages of your best-selling novel. Isn't it funny how people want to get a front seat at any game or concert but scramble to get a back seat at the church? Isn't it funny how we need two or three weeks' notice to fit a church event into our schedule but can adjust our schedule at the last moment for any other event? Isn't it funny how hard it is for people to learn a simple gospel well enough to tell others, but how simple it is for the same people to understand and repeat gospel? Isn't it funny how we believe what the newspaper says, but question what the Bible says? All right. Isn't it funny how everyone wants to go to heaven, provided that they do not have to believe, think, or do, or say anything to get there? Isn't it funny how you can send a thousand jokes through email and they spread like wildfire, but when you start sending messages to provide the gospel, people think twice even about sharing it. How, how does this thing reflect your life? All right. And my scripture was this, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't never want to make excuses or let any of these things that I read here tonight fit my life. And I pray that my light will ever shine for people that I can promote this gospel. I pray for them. You know, I come in here last Sunday and I was feeling so down. I felt like God didn't answer prayers and the devil was really boring with me. I opened my Bible and just opened up in this verse here. If they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That really picked me up. All right. Amen. Amen. Who else has got a scripture they like to read? Man, this excites me. I'll go on to Psalm 
Christ that the Apostle with the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. If you need that way, and you will know, trust him also, and he will bring it to pass. God, it's in his word that he will give us our, it's a promise that he'll give us our needs, and he, he will also give us the desires of our hearts. And he has given my heart's desires, and I thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you.
You know, we need to be like that pine tree on the hill. No matter how cold it gets or how dry it gets, it stays green. We need to be like that the people can see the Jesus in our life. Right. We shouldn't have to tell people that we're Christian. You know, I'm glad to say that I'm a Christian today. I love the Lord with all my heart, all my mind, and all my soul. You know, people run and boss up to this Y2K that the Lord was coming. Well, what good did it do in the Bible? Because he couldn't take it with them. The Bible tells me the Lord said, I'll come as a thief in the night. Not even an angel in heaven will know. You know, if we know what time the thief was coming, we'd have our doors locked. And if people know what time Jesus was coming back, they'd get out there in the middle of the door and do everything that they want to do. So about two minutes before he comes in, that's for your right. But my Bible tells me, he said, serve me in your youth. What does youth mean? mean when you're young? What can you do when you get old? And all that we get out and go. I want to be a light with Jesus. I want to walk in his way. He said, stick for the old path and walk therein for he's the good way. Any other way is a bad way, and I don't want this way. No, I want to make it to heaven. That's my goal. I want to go to a place that's not made by human hands, but a place that's made by Jesus. Y'all pray for me that I'll be obedient to God. Somebody else, you got a scripture? I want to read one. No, I'm like Daddy. When the devil buffs you the hardest, that's when to stand up. Because by our testimony, Miss, we overcome. It's in Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created me, O Jacob, and he that formed me, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by the name thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And I thank God that I've been redeemed. I've been converted into something of value, Missy, and I just give Jesus the praise. Yes, you. you know, I think we might for that song. I want uh, Angie and Amber to come up and sing that song. There's been a change in me. Y'all want to sing it for me? They're in the back. They're in the back. But well, there's truly been a change in me. How many of us tonight have ever been a change in me since you come to the Lord? If you're the same person that you used to be, there ain't been no change. Amen? I'm glad I'm not the person that I used to be. Because that person was corrupt. I'm going to the devil's hell. But I'm glad tonight I'm going somewhere where the devil's not going to be. Amen? Amen. It's going to be wonderful just to make it. Our minds can't even comprehend what God's got prepared for us. The Bible just tells us just a portion of it. You know, if you read in there, John was putting him going to write everything that he's seen when he's in a vision. Glory to God. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. Amen. Who's going to be next? I'm going to look at Daniel. Uh, chapter 3, verse 23 and 25. Said, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. And he answered and said, Lo, I see
still early. I got a scripture I want to read. Uh, John chapter 6 and verse 53 says this. Uh, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say to you, except ye eat the flesh of some man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. I want to tell you tonight, if you ain't got the blood of Jesus applied to your life, you have no life in you. You have none. You know what? There's a lot of people going around today, and I know a lot of people don't get to talk to them, maybe like I do, Brother David, but there's a lot of people today that believe that they've got God applied to their life, and they haven't done it the Bible way. And they think that Jesus is in their life. And they haven't got the blood applied to them, Brother Johnny. And I thank God that I understand the Scripture clearly and got Jesus applied to my life. Because I know I'll get out here and I see people, I see hundreds of people every week and get to talk to them. And they're not going the Bible way. They're not even close. But I praise God that i got eyes that I can see and ears to hear the Word of God. And I want to keep an ear to it, Brother Spirit, that hear what Jesus has to say and have the blood applied to your life. It's so important. So important. Without the shedding of blood, without the blood in your life, you ain't going nowhere. Your feet are not going to leave the ground when Jesus comes back. And I want to be ready when he comes back. Who's going to be next? You know, brother, I sat over in Charleston when I took my wife back to school for radiation treatment before she died. Over at the, uh, Thomas' cancer center over there. You know, I sat and watched people come in and out that door. It was just like traffic. And I sat there, I was wondering how many, how many people that had God in their life that walked through that door. It was not just old people, but it was kids coming in there with cancer and stuff. Who's going to be next? Brother Charlie. Brother Charlie.
Amen. 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 Praise God. And if I spoke scripture, the scripture comes to my mind. I said, uh, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Praise God. That's my two favorite scriptures out there, Brother Frank. If we'll call on him, he'll answer us, Sister Missy. And he'll show us things that would bombard our mind. God will do things for us people that goes beyond our thoughts. He goes beyond anything we know. God can answer prayer beyond what, what we measure in sometimes. We put him in, in, in measurements, but God has no measure. Jesus had the spirit without measure, the Bible says. And I believe we can have the same Holy Ghost tonight. We can have it without measure tonight. Because the whole kingdom of heaven is under man today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. We can do this. How many is ready for the Word? Ready for the Word. Amen. It's all standing to you, if you would, please. And let's give our pastor, most of all, Jesus Christ, a great day. Amen. Change situations through the Bible. 
so many people's prayer life. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. He don't want God's people praying. That's right. That's right. But I believe God's got a people that's going to pray anyhow. Amen. 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 Praise God. How many know we're going to pray anyhow? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I believe that. I tell you, the Lord is just so wonderful tonight. We had a wonderful, good service last night where we were at. Brother Spirit told me that he had been in a meeting and got anointed the greatest that he had ever known of. I, I just tell you, God is doing special things right now. Amen. I believe the word of God, amen, is breaking the back of the devil. Amen. How many believe that tonight? Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something other than the devil don't care how much we shout. And I'm going to tell you, he does recognize the word. Amen. The devil Amen. That the authority of God is in His Word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And that the very words that that centurion said, he said, he said, if you just speak the word on it, yeah. I know that my servant yep. can be healed. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, we're not going anywhere until we realize the power that's in the Word of God. The devil recognizes the Word of God. The Bible said that he, the Word of God. Amen. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of a sovereign of the soul, spirit, mind, bone, and as a desert of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I'm telling you that God's word is powerful. Amen. Amen. Bible said, "What the word of the king is, there is power." You want me to tell you what makes a powerful church? Where the word is. Amen. And where the word is, Brother Harold, the devil may pop. Hey man, but he can't stick around. Amen. There's something wrong, amen, when a devil can just have a day in church somewhere. And every night, hey man, just take a meeting over. There's something wrong somewhere. Because I'm going to tell you, hey man, that with Jesus, the devil was. He was being tempted by the devil. Amen. Three times Jesus spoke the word. Amen. By the time Jesus got through speaking the word, Amen. The box said that the devil, Amen, departed from him. Uh -huh. yep. If we'll stand on the word of God and preach the word strong, I believe the devil cannot stay. Amen. Around that church. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Praise God. There's something wrong with it. You got to struggle every night. Amen. Trying to have service. Something wrong. The, amen. The devil recognizes the word, brother. Amen. Yeah, it is. We preach the word. We don't mix it with our tradition, our ideas, our theologies. Never other kind of ism of cynicism and programs and rituals and creeds. Amen. Of dogmas and traditions of men. We preach the, amen, pure word of God, the, amen, that, that, that word that's incorruptible. Amen. I'm telling you that, amen, the word cuts the devil, and the devil can stay where the word is. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. amen, church. Amen. You look at that man that had the legion of devils. Amen. When the word got on 
But we learn to live and stand on the Word of God. Amen. Live will have total victory in our life when we stand by the authority of what the Word says. Amen. Not by our feelings. Not by our Pentecostal tradition. Amen. When we stand on the Word of God, when our shouts go, amen, if we go on the Word of God, hell can rage, amen, but we'll stand because of the Word of God. Amen. I'm telling you what the Word is. The Bible said where the Word of the King is, there is what? That some of you, praise God, did not ought to be, amen, a, a, a giant killer. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. amen, church. Amen. You ought to be a devil slayer tonight. <laughs> it's a shame, amen, that, that we, we suffer out the devil, amen, to live for us days at a time without rising up in the power of the Word of God and doing what James said. He said, resist the devil. And he'll flee from. Praise God. You want me to tell you how to get rid of the devil? A devil hammer the word down on him. I said you hammer the word on the devil and he'll flee. That's right. They don't care how much speed you get up here, Brother Hurl, and, and preach our ideas and our theories and what we think the word means. But when we preach the whole adultery, word of God, the pure word, the devil recognizes that. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the power that's in the Word, don't you? Amen. Amen. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God of the salvation. It's the power of God that gospel is. Amen. Amen. How many know that's true? Amen. Give Jesus another hitch. Among the captains, the same was Adonai, the Ezra, 
directed up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Elisire, the son of Dudea, the Ahohite, of the three mighty men with David, and they were the five, and they defied the Philistines who were gathered for battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines, and then his hand was weary. And his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought the great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. My God, ain't that something great? Y'all understand that? Y'all hear the word tonight? And after him, Sham of the son of Agi, the Hayrite, the Philistines were gathered together in a troop. And there was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. And he stood in the midst of this ground, and the Philistines slew the Philistines and wrought a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time. And to the cave of Adullam and the troops of the Philistines and pitched in the valley of Rephah. And David was then in at a hole, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink from the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the wells of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he would not drink of it, but poured it out unto the Lord. He said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. For this is the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives. Therefore he will not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Uriah, was chief among the three. And he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them and won a name along with these, with the, with the three. Was he not most honorable among the three? Therefore, he was their captain. Howbeit he attained not unto the first three. And Benaiah, the son of Jodiah, the son of Ebal, man of Cadizel, who was done many acts, and slew two lions like men of Moab, and went down and slew a lion in the Miss of a pit in the time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, and he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the sons of Jedidiah, and won a name along with these three mighty men. And he was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not on the first three. And David set him over his guard. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give Jesus. Amen. about him. 
and the Bible wrote about it in David's last prophetic words. When David began to write, he began to write about his mighty men that he had. You know what David knew? He knew that only his achievements and what David had done, it could only happen and that because of the people that were surrounding him. Amen. And the devil
You ain't going to get no man for yourself sitting in your church seat. Amen. That's true. Amen. Come on. Sitting around. It's kind of easy. Sit back and prospect. You want the church to fall out prospect. Yeah. Uh, Amen. He said, if he ain't hitting me, who is that hitting me? <laughs> he was trying to tell him what to do. You know what some of you can do? You can sit back there and you tell me what to do. But why don't you get up here and do it? They've never been no battles won. 
Some of you all are going to have to take responsibility. Amen. <coughs> Shamrock preached one time. I'll never forget hearing him tell. This young boy come through the prayer line and had a bottle of oil. Oil. And he told Brother Shamrock, he said, I want you to help me pray over this bottle of oil. He said, I'm going down to the hospital tomorrow. And he said, I'm going to pray for the sick. And he said, I'm going to bless the hospital to heal. Everybody laughed at him. He was a little nobody. Nobody even knew his name. But you know what? They said he took that bottle of oil, went down there, and believed the word of God. If you believe the word of God tonight, they better step out of the word and believe him. They better talk to him what you can do. Let me say this. So help me God one day. There's going to be a little nobody. That's going to open his Bible up and read it. They're going to believe it. Amen. You know what they're going to do? They're going to empty wheelchairs. And they're going to not stop their fears. And they're going to cast out devils. Amen. Why do you sit back with our heart for a little? Amen. Say, oh, I just, I tell you, I see so much going on.
It's all right. It's all right, wife. Come. Say amen for me. Amen. I need an amen for her now. I think it's time somebody gets on the devil's case. Shut up! 
We know him. I want to tell you something, other church. The devil ain't never going to know you sitting on church bench. Amen. You may say, well, I can't preach. Everybody's got a ministry. You may not be able to preach up here in this pulpit. Amen. But you can preach down our covers. Amen. 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 What do you mean? How many of y'all remember the message I preached here one time about the ant? Y'all don't remember that. That may be that's for you all here. You all hear that. You want to eat us? How many people have you all won to this church? <coughs> you wonder why the pew's empty? That pastor do it. <coughs> Yeah, go ahead. You know what an does? Well, he finds a piece of bread. It takes a piece of bread. Jesus said there's four things small upon the earth, but exceedingly great and wise. <laughs> You know what they are? He said one of them was an ant, and some of you need to understand the characteristics and the nature of an ant. You know what an ant does? Some of you, amen, the devil told you nobody cares about you, you ain't been in church in six months. Amen. But an ant can pick up four times its body weight, yeah. and guess what it does with it? <coughs> Call me an ant if you want to, but an ant carries four times its body weight. I may not be a little soaking wet, hey man, a little rack of bones, but I want you to know dynamite comes in a little package. <laughs> huh? Amen. Hey man, church! Amen. It picks up four times its body weight. If you was an ace, you know what that means? That means you ought to be like Samson. He can pick up the gates of the city and put them on his shoulder. Some of you can't even get out of church because you've got a little battle in your fight. Amen. Oh, it's just keeping me weighted down. Amen. Amen. Nobody ain't called me in a month of Sundays. Oh, Lord, this thing will give up. Amen. Amen. You sissy. <laughs> Why don't you right wake up and say, wait a minute here, devil. I can pack four times more than that. Amen. Sister Wanda, this is truth. You know I'm telling you all truth. Amen. People got to be handled like babies. Yeah. We ought to be stronger than that.
good this morning to go to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Sit down to a big old boy. Amen. Uh, dear me. And that gravy, you know, it ain't gravy. This mommy told me, she said, here, what you do? Said you take it, said you wet it. You, 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 you do me down. I said you, you, you wet it down. She said more foul will stick to it. Amen. Said, then you pour water in and let it simmer down. And it makes that gravy off. I was slopping them. You are seeing me this morning. I was like a pig in a hog trough. <laughs> slopping them biscuits up. Saying, oh, I gotta go back. <laughs> Some of you tonight, you know what? That's the way this church ought to be to you. You ought to say, I'm home. Uh -huh. Slopping up biscuits. Amen. <laughs>
and guess what tracks are right to? Where that bread's at, where it can be fed, where it can get it, and bring it back. I tell you not, some of y'all need even a trail. Amen to this church. Praise God. And tell people there's a move of God down there. The word's down there. Amen. Down there. There's a move of God. Amen. Where the name? Ain't made you clear. I guarantee you a hippopotamus cannot pack four times its body weight. It may look little, but it's powerful. This church may be little as far, amen, as the building is concerned. Praise God. But I want this church, amen. We may not be big in numbers and we may not be the biggest church in Logan, amen. But I want some of you, amen, to be full of God and full of God's power and have a name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Listen, what one of David's men did. The Bible said that Israel, the men of Israel were, I'll put it in words that you can understand, that they were, they were dumb. And the truth, the Philistines came up, and you want to get, the Bible said he got the sword in his hand. I pray to God if there's ever a time that I'm not here. The devil catches the pastor gone, that's when he likes to move into a church. I pray to God if it ever get to where I wouldn't be here that I could, I could trust you right. to leave this building in your care. Yes. And amen, if the enemy was to come in and you do exactly what, amen, David's man did. You know what he did? The Bible said, amen, he got a hold of that sword. And he stood up and he defeated the troop. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? The Bible said, amen, that he clammed that sword so hard. That he armed in his hand. You know what that means? That means that he couldn't even let go of where he was a clinging to us. And he said, That day the Lord wrought a great salvation in Israel. That's what some of these churches around here need out of their people. They need somebody, Brother Johnny, that'll get the sword. And stand up in their church and say, I ain't going to let that pastor fight that battle on his own. I'm going to do something. Amen. I'm going to clear for the sword. Amen. I'm going to stand and fight the battle and win a day. Amen. Amen. Listen what Sam had done. See any Sam that's here tonight? <laughs> All right. You know what Sam had done? Shannon got down there in the midst of a pot of, a pot of ground. And the Philistines come up. And the Bible didn't even say how he won the battle, but I would imagine if he was out there in the center of a little patch in a garden, hey man, you know what he did? He may have got a hole and stood on the outer edge of the garden, hey man, when that army was coming up. And the Bible said he stood there and everybody in the church fled. Read your Bible. But you know what Sam had done? He stood in the center of that plot of ground. No doubt with a hole in his hand. And the Bible said, praise God, he defeated the truth. And you know what he did? He made he stood there and said, I'm giving up low ground. I'm not giving up one inch. I'm not backing down one bit. Praise God. And you know what? That come in the ears of David. And the last thing that David ever said, you know what David was really doing? He said, the only reason he meant that we are successful and the reason of these great victories. I, he said, let me tell you that my mighty being, amen, I'd like to go from here and be able to tell people, amen, about the people of this church. Amen. Huh? Does this mean anything to you tonight? Yes. There was another one of them. These three that I just preached about, the Bible said there was none of the rest like unto these three. <coughs> Yet David wrote about others. And David said there was one of them that feeded a number of people and, 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 and a godly Egyptian, handsome, and went down and took his own spear. Slew 
the Egyptian with his own spear. <coughs> and he said, that ain't all that he done. You know what else he done? The Bible said he went down and got in a pit in the time of winter and slew a lion. <laughs> Some of you want a name for yourself, but you don't want to go down and get in no pits. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. I got, could you imagine, Brother Frankie? This man wanted to win a name so bad for himself. He wanted to be known as David's mighty man, a man that went above and beyond the call of duty. And you know what he did? He went in the wintertime and went got in the den, caught back in the den. Got back in there with a lie. Yeah. Oh, some of you crawl in a pit with somebody and say, devil, let him go. Amen. Let him go, devil. You can't have. Why don't some of you stand in the center of the pond? 